Biomaterials, specifically those utilized in tissue engineering, have a variety of applications within the bioengineering field. Tissues normally contain multiple different cell types that all work together to achieve some biological function. Each cell type, though, may contain its own specific needs and physiological requirements. Therefore, a cellular matrix should contain some sort of targeting mechanism to control each cell type. The Pashuk Lab is interested in making a biomaterial that can discriminate based on different cell types by taking advantage of these cell-secreted proteases. On a smaller scale, though, we are working to set up a workflow in which a proteomics-based technique is used to detect peptide sequences that are cleaved by individual cell types and the proteases that are responsible for these cleavages. Matrix metallopeptidases, or MMPs, are a family of proteases that degrade key components of the extracellular matrix. As shown in figure one in the middle of the poster, the molecule we used is called pan-MMP. This, MMP, this type of MMP sequence is rapidly cleaved by many different MMPs. Our protease substrate peptide was synthesized using a standard FMOX solid phase peptide synthesis technique. Additionally, my pan-MMP peptide was flanked by a green fluorophore and a red quencher, as shown in the figure. When the red quencher is close to the fluorophore, the molecule's fluorescence is reduced. Upon a proteolytic cleavage, though, this quencher diffuses away, causing the fluorescence to increase. I also used an azide functional group to covalently couple the peptide to the gel. I then collected proteins secreted from a human monocytic cell line that was cultured for 48 hours. Uh, after I collected this media, I concentrated it using a centrifugal filter. Moving into gel fabrication, the key science behind this involves zoomography, which is a protocol commonly used for the separation and visualization of protease activity using standard gel electrophoresis. This standard polyacrylamide gel, or PAGE, zoomography is used to quantify protein concentrations when used as a Western blot. Instead, though, I use this technology to identify the molecular weight of proteases that are responsible for cleaving these peptides. As shown in figure two at the bottom of the poster, I created a cross-linked 10% polyacrylamide hydrogel with this quenched fluorescent pan-MMP peptide covalently coupled to the hydrogel with an azide cross-linker. I also created a 5% polyacrylamide stacking gel that contained 30 micrograms of protein per well in the stacking gel. As shown in figure 3a at the top of the poster, my protocol involves incorporating specific peptides that are substrates for specific cleavages. As shown in the schematic, these cleavages should cause an increase in green fluorescence. Figure 3b shows my xenographic results. Clear areas of fluorescence can be seen within the lanes, indicating that the protease is cleaving the peptide within the hydrogels. I also validated this technique using trypsin as a positive control. After this validation step, I excised the fluorescent bands to do proteomics through liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. I found MMP peptides suggesting that MMP12 and MMP10 are present inside of the bands, confirming this proteolytic activity with a high confidence. This indicates that a proteomics-based approach can be taken to identify proteins that are present after a zemographic separation. In conclusion, I developed a workflow using a model system by which we can tether a peptide to a page hydrogel, separate out a complex protein mixture through zemography, identify the location of the protease responsible for this cleavage, and finally characterize these proteins through liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. In the future, as my group identifies more candidate peptides in our proteomic screens and cell studies, we will incorporate these peptides into the gel to identify the proteases responsible for cleavages. I would like to thank the Claire Booth Luce Research Scholarship funded through the Henry Luce Foundation for funding my research and the David and Lorraine Freed Undergraduate Research Symposium at Lehigh University for providing me the platform to present my work.